reckoning and dismissal. Thus said the Lord God, I'm going to deal with the shepherds. I will demand a reckoning of them for my flock. And I will dismiss them from tending the flock. Ezekiel chapter 34 verse 10. Then I will appoint a single shepherd over them to tend them. My servant David. He shall tend them. He shall be a shepherd to them. I the Lord will be their God. And my servant David shall be a ruler among them. I am the Lord. And I have spoken, and I will grant them a covenant of friendship. That's Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 23 through 25. My servant David shall be king over them, be one shepherd for all of them. They shall follow my rules and faithfully obey my laws. Thus they shall remain in the land which I gave to them, they to my servant Jacob, and in which your fathers dwelt. They and their children and their children's children shall dwell there forever, with my servant David as their prince for all time. Uh, chapter, Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 24 through 25. These verses were written with reference to God's servant David, of a time in the lands of Abraham that kingdoms existed. Even using the names kings and prince today would only be relevant to those who practice Judaism faithfully, following God's laws, and remaining in the land and dwelling there forever. This is the flock. The Jewish people who practice Judaism and he fear and revere God. This is not an anointment to be king over the lands of Abraham and its people. And God's servant David will come in a time that Israel is a democratic state. In today's world, with so many synagogues and people of Israel, the best interpretation is that David will be a leader of God's flock to tend them and be a ruler among them. David is not a king or a prince of Israel, and there is no mention of a kingdom as commonly believed from the teachings of the sages and the rabbis of the ancient and middle ages and today. When the anointed one comes, the Lord says he will deal with and demand a reckoning from the rabbis and dismiss them from tending the flock. Then he will appoint a single shepherd to tend them, his servant David. He shall tend them. He shall be a shepherd to them. The Lord will be their God, and his servant David shall be a ruler among them. God does not appear to be pleased with the teachings of the rabbis of the day of the Lord and their reliance on the opinions and commentaries of the sages and rabbis from the ancient age and middle ages, who often disagree with one another, there are many inconsistencies and errors in what the sages and rabbis say and what the scripture says. On many occasions, the sages and rabbis, and most notably Rembrandt, have taken from and added to the scripture. God says the anointed one is a shepherd king and prince of the flock, a ruler among them. Not of the promised lands and all its people and perfecting the world. Rambam removes God's word and replaces it with Rambam's word. But the anointing one is a king of the lands and will gather a kingdom unto him. The commandment by God that nothing is to be taken from or added to his teachings and laws of the Torah applies to all the Hebrew Bible, all of which was written at his direction and command, and all of which is God's word. The entire teaching of the era of redemption, restoration, and exaltation, the Messianic era, 
beginning with the arrival of Mushiach, the anointed one, the descendant of David, described in Isaiah 53. Stray so far from the natural order of the world and the ways of God and his words written by his prophets that it angers him. The prophets were rarely listened to and God spoke directly to them, the prophets, telling them what to write. That is one reason he will have a reckoning with them and dismiss them. The sages and rabbis are men interpreting and teaching that in the day of the Lord, King Moshiach will perfect the world. The world speaking Hebrew, practicing Judaism, recognizing the Jews have been corrected by God all along, is what the flock wants to hear and brings donations to the shepherds. Interpreting and teaching what God actually says will not bring many donations for the reasons that the flock will want to know. Why is God going to have a reckoning with you and dismiss you? They would ask their rabbi. They will want to know what the sages and rabbis have done to anger God. God is not creating a new world of all men loving and exalting and holding in high esteem the Jewish people and practicing Judaism, though he is creating a new heaven for only the Jewish people with the name Israel shall endure. God has never changed the will of men or how they think of him and the Jewish people in his power. In the exaltation the Jewish people receive from the world will come through the efforts of God's righteous servant, the shepherd David, as directed and commanded by God as he did with Moses. Two billion or so Christians are not going to wake up one day and in one accord denounce Jesus as a false god and convert to Judaism. This is true for the Muslims too. No man is going to convince the followers of Islam that he is the last prophet of God and that it is not Muhammad as etched in stone on their mosque. Two billion Muslims are not going to wake up on the same day as the Christians and denounce Allah as they know him and convert to Judaism. Hezbollah, Hamas, the leaders of Iran, ISIS, and the other terrorist group would more likely announce a jihad against God's righteous servant than they would acknowledge that the Jewish people had been right about God all along. The real world is not the confines of a synagogue, yeshiva, or religious library. Rabbis need to step out and consider their beliefs in a world of education, science, and technology that did not exist in the days of the Bible, the days of the sages, and through the Middle Ages. God's words had to be understood by an illiterate and civilized people from the teachings of intelligent men in a world where meat was eaten and cooked and babies were sacrificed to gods in the biblical days. His book was written for different ears, eras, <laughs> ears, eras, and people. The people of the ancient age and middle ages, and the people of the age of enlightenment and reasoning through the age of information today. Excuse me. God's reckoning with the rabbis today and their dismissal from tending the flock cannot happen in the real world today. There are far too many synagogues and Jewish people and rabbis practicing Judaism. It was something that could be believed in the ancient age and the Middle Ages. The rabbis today base their interpretation of the scripture on a world that no longer exists a world of the sages and rabbis in the ancient and middle ages and not this world. They do not teach of the reckoning God will have with them and their dismissal that leaves no room 
for special circumstances. The belief that David will have all of Israel practicing Judaism and perfecting the world with everyone speaking Hebrew will not happen. If God was going to make that happen in his power, he would have written it that way. God says in Malachi 3 that many will heed and revere him and be written into the scroll of remembrance, and many will not. He says this with the arrival of the angel of the covenant with sin forgiveness at hand. That's the new covenant of Jeremiah 31. The covenant which says that his forgiveness of sin will cause Torah to be written on every heart and all will heed him. The scripture of God is written by his prophets and his command and direction with multiple purposes as well as for prophecy. It must be interpreted with the world of the prophet, the world of the sages and rabbis, and the world of the day of the Lord in mind. All rabbis are dismissed when the anointed one who God calls David arrives. Not from their synagogues and constituents, as that is not possible. God knew that would be the case when he had it written by Ezekiel. They are dismissed.